VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Thank you so much for coming on to hear VIP Access podcast. This is the final episode for the second season of my podcast, and I couldn't be prouder to be sitting here about to speak to an individual, an artist who I look up to, who really inspires me. He's a lover of music, dance, and language, and for some reason, he finds a way to balance all his passions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome none other than Mbai. What's up, my dude? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I haven't seen you for some time. Yeah, it's been a year almost. It's yeah. been a year yeah, almost. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. And the interesting thing about this, uh, you know, this interview, this podcast is we actually did an interview and I feel like it was at that a time when you were still working on your music. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it, a lot of things were happening. I just was a mom. Yeah. And so now, like, we decided to revisit this specific interview and, and, and you know, your career. And I feel like it's it's a better time for b- both of us. Certainly. And I feel like even from last year to t- till this year, you've experienced so much growth, so much change. Yes. You know, a lot of things happened. And yeah. we, I want us to talk about that. Of course. But before we get into that, yes. how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, just as you said, and we're going to get deeper into to it, I experienced uh, some some um, some lows mm. since we since we met, mm. but um, I found comfort in family, friends, and also you. You came through at, at that point, and um, I've been fairly I, I've been faring well, uh, just to you know generally. Mm. But I could be better. But um, I'm happy where I am actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm so happy that you know you honored me with having your presence at my podcast yet again um and I, I also i am happy that you seem to be in a better space um for those listening um my friend by just lost his mom a few months ago yes and you know it was a very difficult experience it still continues to be yeah. and healing is not a one-day affair or a one-year affair so how are you coping with the healing mm-hmm. um has your art assisted you in any way Actually, um, so the, the multiple answers to our question. Um, so I lost my mom in February, February 23rd to be exact. And um, at first, um, I didn't want to get back to art because one thing about art is that it, it makes you um, or it forces you to, to, to be in touch with your, with your deepest emotions, right? So you cannot, you cannot just be on the surface, you know. It's not something that you can do uh, well, you know, multitasking emotionally or in, in the moment, you know. So you have to be there present, right? Um, so I avoided that for like a month and a half almost. Actually, I came back to art um, like a month and a half, uh, end of April, hmm. from February 23rd. And and um, and it's actually my friends were pushing me. I'll be like, you need to you need to get back to who you are, you know. Mm. And of course, I remember you calling me and you're like, you need to get to dance because I know dance makes you happy. Yeah. And so all these voices and uh, of course I was taking time with my process too. Uh, and as you I, as you've said, grieving is not it's not there's no there's no marking scheme to it. Yeah. I mean, um, there's no predefined way that each individual should go through the process. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is as personalized as, uh, as as they come, you know. So, um, so after 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 that period, I came slowly to it. It was still difficult. I could not eat well for that period, even on, when I was doing practice. But as I went on, I slowly regained the strength. I'm not 100 percent. Maybe I'm at 70 right now. But, you know, uh, I'm still pushing. Yeah. I love that. 70 and still pushing. Still pushing. You know, yeah. and ev- ev- every time I, f- I always feel like you wake up, you feel like you're at 100, you're 20, yeah, you're 30. Yeah, like, fair, yeah. And even for this podcast, I've been telling everybody, like, now that I feel like I'm at 100, I want to keep going yeah. because I have that 100 feeling. And even sure. when we did the interview last time, I was, I don't know, I think I was at 60. Yeah. So now I'm feeling so much better than yeah. last year when yeah. I was doing the same thing. So mm. I do wish you well in, mm. in, the, in the path to recovery mm-hmm. um, and to, you know, getting back to yourself 100%. I appreciate um, that. For those listening, I'm always painting a picture to who my guest is because yeah. most of the artists I'm interviewing here, I've either met them or I have not met them physically, but I've experienced their art. So Mbae um, is a musician. He is an amazing dancer. In fact, some of the um, dances he has, 
um, on TikTok have gone viral and he was even invited to TV shows to speak about his viral content. So he's a superstar. <laughs> and also he's a linguist master. He loves French. He actually went to school, yeah. not school with, but went to the same school that um, a former um, French president went to, Sarkozy. Yeah. How did you get to that school and what's the school? Can you ex educate me? <laughs> <laughs> the school is called uh, Sciences Po uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and so it's it's a it, it's the best um, school in Europe in terms of political science and humanities, and it's the third best in the world. So um, I went to a secondary school at Mango High School. Mm -hmm. So uh, my love for French started when I was in Form Two mm. because there was just this pressure about people who are uh, I was musically gifted. So they're like, okay, so that now that you go to music first, you might as well you know explore this French thing so that you can do French choral verses. You remember those yeah, things? Yeah, 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 yeah. So my love for French started there, and I um, so. So to go to that school, first of all, you have to have a good level in French because the classes are in French for the first two years. And for some reason, I mean, I, I would think that the logic would be inversed, like the first two years in English so that you ease into it. Now it's like you get the, into the deep end, you know, right away. Uh, and, and of course, it's, it's political science, it's law, so it, it's conk stuff. So you have to have a B2, you understand that, of course, you... Yeah. I mean, you speak good French, first of all. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so embarrassed here right now because really? I have... I studied French yeah. and I actually didn't even complete my diploma. I'm mm. not sure if I told you that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, but, you know... Uh, but the, the and thing then is... <laughs> I just didn't use my French until one time I was going to, 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 to France mm -hmm. and I was, like, um, stranded at the airport and that's uh -huh. when I had to remember the the little French that is still in my mind and, uh -huh. you know, get a, get around. You know how it is in France. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. French people don't really yeah, mess with you if you don't snobbish. even try. They're very snobbish. That's Do true. you want to say they're snobbish? <laughs> yeah, they, everybody knows that. <laughs> Actually, it's not every, a secret. They know it. <laughs> they know it themselves. In yeah. fact, they come, pardon, pardon, before you say anything, it's like, hi, pardon, you know, so, um, yeah. yeah, so, if if I had been speaking my French properly, this could have maybe been a French interview. But I, I couldn't. Cool. I couldn't even do a French interview now. No, I mean the, the thing is that provided you've mastered your fundamentals, I mean practicing French because I I think for you what what just remains is practicing the language yeah. in different contexts yeah. because the fundamentals are there. You know, like if I read, I understand. If see? I see a verb, I know this verb. I know how it's conjugated. You I see? know what it means. Yeah, I mean the deepest form of mastery of an art. Um, is 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 in the fundamentals, the grammar, those articles, the mm. conjugation that you've just talked about. So 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 yeah, uh, and and that's that's why I was I was uh, I texted you about the other thing if you remember, so that you can practice your French too. The other thing <laughs> that you, yeah yes yes. So yes, um, so yeah. So when I was in, just go back to what I was saying. When I was in Form Two, after after you know getting a knack of the language, mm. I participated in various competitions, and I remember was it in 2015? I was the best. I was the best French public speaker in the country because there were those these competitions. Mm. So that's where I was spotted by the school. They're like, okay. The we... best French public speaker yeah. in the country. In the country, yes. Whoa, he's on my podcast, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best of the best here at VIP Access. I love it. So, yeah. I, and um, so they spotted me there. Um, they sponsored my, my French courses when I finished school mm. at Alliance Francaise. And I did my diploma in French. And then I was taken in scholarship, which is very hard to get. So I think uh, I consider myself very lucky. It's very hard to get a scholarship to such schools. So uh, so that's when I got there. And then the rest is history. And when you came back to Kenya, you also got an opportunity to work at the French embassy yes, yes, where yes. you still work. Yes, yes, yes. So that's amazing. That's amazing. That's, yeah. amazing. that's amazing. And yeah. so between your day job mm -hmm. at the French embassy and your love for music and mm -hmm. dance, yeah. Where do you find the balance? Mm -hmm. Because a nine to five, yes. you know, can, be can sometimes even be nine to six, yeah. depending on how busy the projects are. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of artists have come here on the podcast and told me stuff like, music can't be my plan B, like yeah, it's true. my plan A, because without it, I have nothing. Yeah. So I wonder for you to have that and to still have music and to still have dance, mm -hmm. how do you manage to do all of these? Okay, um... So first of all, I, I'm, I'm a very obsessive person. Like what, what I decide to do, I'm really, I go to it with like complete obsession. Yeah. So, um, so even if I do it on the side, it's not really a side thing because uh, so my, 
my day looks like this. I wake up at 5.30, go to the gym, the dance studio. At 6, I'm at, I'm, I'm at the dance studio, 6 to 8. And then I carry a change of clothes. And then I shower. By 8.45, I'm at work. My work starts at 9. I do my job 9 to 6, sometimes 9 to 7, as I've mm. said. And go back to the dance studio or the music studio. And that's how I completed my album, actually. All my tracks. I, I wrote my, my, my tracks uh, over the years, but I completed the studio versions like in the evening, like from sometimes from 7 to 11, mm. and then still the same day. So uh, I, I think for me, it's like, uh, I, I know art is very expensive, right? Uh, and my day job serves to, um, to fund my art, so to speak. I love that. Yeah, so, I love that. So, uh, and, then, um, and then I have this, uh, this other side, Booksmart side, that I think I cannot ignore too. And, uh, and it's because it's because of that I work at the embassy, right? So because they're, 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 they're channeling that. And I think if I'm able to develop that and I'm still young, uh, my reasoning is why not, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so I just, um, my thing is like, I'm very obsessive and I surround myself with people who are obsessive too. Hmm. So it keeps me on my toes. Like I, the, the, the morning session thing I do with my friend. So it's like at 6.10 we're starting. He's there before me sometimes, you know. We, we just compete with each other in a friendly way hmm. uh, and make sure we are, we're on our toes and we are, we're posting videos three times a week and we are, we're ensuring the quality, we're ensuring their own time. And so that, that keeps me, you know, so uh, one, one looking at my Instagram page, I'm like, okay, this guy's a full-time artist, you know? So I, I don't want there to be a difference in obsession mm. uh, between a full-time artist and myself who's also at work. So that, that's, that's how I approach it. I love it. Yeah. I really love it. Yeah. Um, you spoke a little bit about your album and your music. Yeah. Um, your album is just about to drop. Yes. If you could just give us more about this album, the yeah. coming of it, this will be the, your debut album. Yes, yes, yes. You already have a couple of singles that have come out. Yeah. How did they do so far? And mm. you also get a chance to, um, you know, perform your music. So um, my first uh, first single of the album came up around around June last year. Uh, it's very Kizomba. It's called Right. I'm a Kizomba dancer. So um, that, that was one of the first songs I wrote when I was working for this album, actually. Mm. And um, uh, and I was called to various uh, TV stations, um, uh, K24, uh, uh, 10 over 10, uh, even NTV. Uh, and so, uh, it, so on the media aspect, it did so well. And these are the things that just, they just saw my stuff online because I, I, I produced the video, I wrote the script, and I, of course, I choreographed the dancer too, mm. the dance in it. And um, so, so for me, as, as a first thing, it, it did very well. Because mm -hmm. of even from just putting it out, you mm. started getting you know, media attention and yes, people yes, yes. calling you for interviews here yes, and there. Yes, 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 yes. Fantastic. So, well and, done. It, and, and it was crazy on that, on, on that front. And so about my album is... Um, uh, it's a it's a mix of styles and languages, right? So if I'm just going to describe it in one phrase, um, I've written some songs um, in French, Swahili, and Spanish. Like there's a song with the three languages, and then the songs in purely written purely in Swahili, mm. like the all right song, the Kizomba song, and then uh, the songs in French, all like only French, right? And also um, the um, there's some songs in. Um, in Swahili and French, mm. and Swahili and English. So there's a little bit for everybody. Mm. And in terms of sales, there's r and I'm a very um, deep R&B fan. You are. Very, you are. You're a deep R&B fan. And yeah. I think you do love Chris Brown, Asha. Very, very. You like to do those moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those slick moves. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, the funny story is that I was a, when I was little, I was a fan of Neo. Because uh -huh. he was the R&B king and at the time. And he used to have very slick moves then. Yeah, now too. I'm like, where are your moves now? <laughs> the voice too. Right? Uh, but he says that he he says that for the moves, look at Chris Brown. Look at Chris Brown for the <laughs> for the music. And for the voice, look look at Mario. I mean, he said that. Like, yeah. So I was like, okay, what about you? But for, at the time, it was new for me. I, I, I discovered Chris Brown a bit. I knew his music, but as a person, I discovered him, I, I discovered him in 2010, 2011. And uh, his favorite jam is um, uh, With You of All Time. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite R&B. So I have a heavy R&B influence, even the, in the way I sing mm. in, in my runs, you see. But in the album, I try to mix everything, right? Mm. So I pick what I love and what people love, of course. Like you have to, you know, 
you have to it has to go both ways that yeah. you just don't write an album that is for you you know yeah. it, ha- it it has to be for you and also for the people listening so there's um this um rumba hip hop in it there's this R&B R&B like acoustic um uh, Ed Sheeran vibes uh there's kizomba and there's afro afro mm. i don't know if you know this french singer called Tyke. Mm-mm. Tyke. i mean right now is the biggest uh R&B I am be pop singer in France. Nice. So a bit of influence from him too. So just just to mix up the style so that it's what I love. I love all those songs mm. and I'm sure that everyone will appreciate at least one song in the album. Fantastic. Yeah. I don't know actually of any other Kenyan singer or performer who's incorporating you know various languages if not the in, our own indigenous African yeah. languages like you are. Yeah. So I find that quite unique. I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you know any other person? Um hmm. Not that I've heard of, actually. Not that I've heard of. Maybe that's there, but there's it. one of one by this one. <laughs> yeah, one of that. one. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. That's yeah. nice. So about your dance, I yeah. think you you mentioned you know you love Kizomba and yeah. so on and so forth. But I I want you to go deeper into your relationship with dance because yeah. I've seen you even perform and uh, you are able to do all dances. Like yeah. I see you doing Kizomba, then you can do R and B. You yeah. can also do Afro B. Yes, I see. You know, I've seen you rocking those different yeah. styles and different genres so yeah. do you also want to do dance um you know professionally like would you um want to you know be paid to come and dance or mm. do you only do it for your own sanity and happiness yeah. and for your own videos but how far do you want to go with this dance thing i mean i, I approach I approach dance in in the perspective of um performing arts you know so i'm a performing artist so that goes for my vocals so it, it, they're all tied together mm. so my vocals uh my dance and also just stage presence you know yes and um so my my relationship with dance um started a bit late yeah. compared to my relationship with music yes because i started to dance i right now i'm 26 years old i started to dance when i was around 22 before then i couldn't dance like Everyone from high school just says, no, 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 we cannot believe this is the same person. Mm. Because I used to sing, yes, but I never used to dance. So I started with Kizomba um, and Latin. Latin is Kizomba, Salsa, Bachata. That's where I started. And then I took classes with Art in Motion, you know mm, them? Of course. Yeah, the, the hip-hop dance. And, and of course, they do a bit of everything, but from them I learned hip-hop. And then Afro, I I learned by myself mm. majorly. Because, I mean, being in Kenya, I mean, there is... I mean, there's so much you can learn it's from an explore- everywhere. It's a, it's a, not exploration, but um, explosion. Yeah, 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 You know, yeah. different sounds, different genres. Yeah. You know, even the clubbing experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you listen to the radio, we are very versatile yeah, in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Uh, more than all the other countries. You that's know, for sure, for sure. You'll go to Tanzania, they play more of their own artists. Bongo, and, yeah. You know, Swahili mm. singers. Southern Africa, the same. Most yeah, of true. their kind of, you know, artists from their region the same with West Africa That's right. but this is one very unique country where yeah. you will listen to all sounds from all over the continent and the world that's true that's true and and that's a superpower because when you when you listen for example to Capital FM mm. I mean there's an R&B song followed by I mean by you know Saudi soul song followed by a bong song yeah. so you, you need for me it was like i need to know how to express this um this sounds mm. through dance but not not losing the authenticity I you, you like can that. you can dance hip hop uh, you know on a, a bong of flavor song but i mean people will be like okay i mean we, yeah. we just need you to express it the way it is expressed yeah. you know so that, that's how i started ex- exploring different styles mm. and, and i'm just naturally curious so uh, even with my my dancer partner, I was like, we need to be able to dance everything so that we're just not like one trick ponies. Mm. Like if we put put a, a kizomba song, they will dance hip hop. Then that is for sure they'll dance hip hop. Yeah. You know? So and, and that's how I was able to diverse everything. But just to answer your question, I mean, if someone calls calls me and tells me, hey, I need you to perform this, uh, I need you to, to express this music through dance only. I mean, I'd be like, okay, because Why not? I, I'm, I'm like, I can't be taken as a professional dancer, a professional singer. If someone mm. tells me just come and sing, I'd be like, okay, why not? You know. Mm. So those are things that I'm not like very um, strict on. Mm. But if you ask me, I'm a performing artist, so that goes with everything. I wanted to take you a little bit back to growing up. Where mm. did you grow up? 
um, um, Max Vegas. Oh, yes. yes. That's what we have in common. <laughs> well, I didn't grow up in Nakuru. I grew up in Molo. Well, but yeah. we would come to Nakuru to visit, yeah. you know, to eat nice chips at Gilani's. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Gilani, yeah, you remember? <laughs> It was a vibe. It was a vibe. It but the showground. Yes, Talk go about. to the showground. It's been to Kafanya Karata and a mom to Kay to Kaibua Pesa. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> we used to keep off those things. Like, nah. You know those things I'm talking yeah. about. Wali kwa uko kwa showgrounds. Yeah, of course, of course. All manner of people. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, what are your memories of Nakuru and what was it growing up? Like, mm. did you have other siblings? Okay. You know, did your parents or mm. um, whoever was your guardian, you mm. know, influence you and help you grow into the person you are today? We moved to Nakuru town mm -hmm. in 2000. I was, I was five years old. Mm. And, um, but before we used to live in Joro, you know, of course. Oh my you know, God, Joro you're is. coming closer to Molo. <laughs> coming closer to Molo, yeah. You never told me this. <laughs> How much did you? I know, I didn't tell you. Joro Moro, the matter to they say, Joro Moro, Joro Moro, Joro Moro. <laughs> Joro Moro, Joro Moro. Uh, yeah, and you're like, what? Yeah, what? yeah. Yeah, so uh, we used to live in Joro, uh, and then we came to Nakuru town. Um, we used to live in a place called Race Coast um, when I was five. Mm. And so uh, I have, three siblings, three older siblings, so I'm the last one. Mm. And then, um, so my parents uh, were very book smart. Like my father was a secondary school teacher. And he used to teach Kagumo High when Kagumo High was Kagumo High, mm. you know, right now, yeah. Mm. So he was very strict on 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 booking, if I just say. Yeah, like, books, read, We used to read. wake up at three, like used to wake us up at three. To Never read. used to wake up, to, to read. Yo. And he was a secondary school teacher. So there's no way you're when getting your away is, with anything. When your father is your own teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He has different hearts. Yeah. Apo sasa ni headmaster mekuwa mshama ni mwali musifa the baba yako. Yeah, you know, like, and he used to be very, very strict. And of course, um, used to um, uh, threaten us with bodily harm if we failed, you know. And you're like, he, and you're like he's, he means those things he's saying, you know. And he, because he was known to be a disciplinarian. So he taught us to be very critical in the way we pursue things mm. because critical, I mean, being book smart and being able to perform well in school, I mean, what you learn fundamentally, apart from those things that you never use uh, in a chemistry, whatever, those things <laughs> that you never use when you're an adult, <laughs> it teaches you to be very critical and yeah. to be very strategic. Yeah. So whatever else you pick, uh, you pick up uh, in, as you go, you're like, okay, um, what I've learned is that things take time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's a strategy to think. There's a yeah. way we are supposed to approach things, yeah. right? There so, are no shortcuts. You have to read the entire book. Yeah, you, you need you to, know. you know, and you need to and be you very careful. To, and you have to understand. And if you don't, you have to start reading again. Again and again. You know. And you need, for example, he was a math teacher. So you used to do hundreds of exercises at home. Math. Yeah. My goodness. Lord, I mean, I mean, home when was I was a like kid. School. Yeah, uh, when I was a kid, I mean, I used to. I used to go to a school called Kimathi when I was um, like lower primary. Mm. So I go and then we finish school at one. Mm -hmm. He comes for me, picks me up, you know, cooks ugali and milk. And he'll be like, okay, you're going to study till five, then you can go and play. And when our kids are going to play like directly from you school. You're doing math. Doing math and, and the handwriting. And then the handwriting thing never picked up because my handwriting is trash right now. But the thing, <laughs> the thing about math that really stuck. And how I can see it help me is, the, is, is that, I mean, practicing. Like, practicing is in everything you do, mm. even for you. I mean, I mean, everything you've perfected up to this point, which, are, which is many things. I read your bio, very impressive, by the way. Oh, thank yeah. you. So I'm just like, this is, this is practice too. So for me, when I take that to dance, I'm just like, practice every day like I did in math. Mm. Of course, like, that is not consciously what I'm thinking. But subconsciously, it, that's what I was taught. Yes. Yeah, like you practice every day to be better. Yes. It's normal that you're not good. It's, it's because you've not practiced. So yeah. practice to be good, you know? So th that's how I approached everything. And that's how I was able to master different fields. I started with French, practicing every day. And then I picked up dance. Even if you, I was like, why am I picking up dance when I'm 22? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. But subconsciously, I was like, okay, I can practice a lot so I become faster, better, you know? So that was, that's my mentality. Mm. And that's why I picked up from from when I was growing up. And <clears throat> just a little detail is that we, we, we're never very, we're not, I mean, I come from a humble background actually. Even from race course, we never had a lot, you mm. know? So um, that, that, that affected me in some ways, but I've always uh, taught myself to take the positive, you know? 
just taught, taught myself to remember where I come from, you know, and that's very important because I don't come from 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 riches, right? And uh, I remember sometimes I was struggling to pay fees even when I was when I was in high school, uh, and um, and and I had the mentality that I, I come from nothing, so I cannot I cannot mess around, you know. Yeah, I have to be the best at this thing I'm doing. And right now, when people look at me, I'll be like, oh, you fucking rich kid, you know? But I'm like, oh, you I wish know. you knew, you, you know? You don't know my story. You don't they know need my to story. listen to this podcast. Hey. So at the point, so coming from, you know, a high school student, even struggling to pay mm -hmm. um, school fees, then you become the best, you know, French student, best speaker in the country. Yeah. Then you get the scholarship to this very prestigious school. Yeah. What did Papa think? Actually, uh, so my dad had passed on at oh, that point. No. Yeah, yeah. My, my dad passed on on, on I was seventeen. Okay. Uh, he had high blood pressure and diabetes. And, but uh, Mama was there to so see. So my mother this. was there. So my mother was very happy. I mean, she couldn't she believe it. She must have been very proud. Excited. She was telling her friends, all her friends, that she day. was crying. Yeah, very, very. Aww. Even the night when I was calling her, mm. she was like, yeah, "Man, I can't believe this," and she just broke down. And I was like, "I mean, this is for you, you know," because I remember like. She she used to she she used to grind every day mm. to get us food, and and I mean it was like like hand to mouth at the point, and like her seeing like the, her children do this, I mean it's not something she could have conceived at the point of struggling, you know. Of course. And she was like, "No, um, I'm very happy for you, and I know you're gonna make me proud." And even after I graduated in 2021 with my master's, I mean, she was just, you know, you know, out of this world. And again, I was like, this is for you, you know. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was something. Hey. It was something, yeah. yeah. One up for mom. Mom yeah. is so proud. And I'm, I'm happy that she got to see this by, yeah. you know, before her time on earth ended. Yeah. Because... She's essentially seen her son, you know, go to that prestigious school, get a prestigious job, mm -hmm. you know, be able to still follow his other passions. And so so in a, in a very dedicated manner, yeah. just like she taught you and your dad. So yeah. I think um, that's that would be a proud moment for her. And this is why I really wanted you on this podcast. And I really wanted um, the people listening to understand that there are no shortcuts. That's for sure. You know, That's for whoever sure. you are, whatever you do, you have to work hard at it and you have to work every day and guess what there are levels to levels yeah that's true when you yeah. get to number one yeah. there's another thing yeah, yeah, yeah. when you get to number one you're another thing yeah, you know when true. you become the top artist in kenya there's tanzania yeah. then there's uganda then there's yes. yeah, nigeria yeah. then there's so if you really love what you're doing and really want to succeed no one is going to tell you the secret no yeah. one is going to teach you how to do it but you have to teach yourself you have to be the one you know to take it upon yourself to learn more That's for sure. to get yourself better yeah. and you are that kind of individual yeah. and i i don't meet a lot of these kind of individuals on on my day to day mm. and that's part of the reason why i started this podcast so that it can inspire other creatives and artists listening to understand that you are not alone you're not any different you're yeah. not, your struggles are not unique to you like yeah, sure. look at us yeah. a girl from molo yeah. and a guy from joro yeah, they even rhyme <laughs> right <laughs> Joro Moro <laughs> team. <laughs> and now we're global citizens, you know, traveling the world, doing what sure. we love to do mm. because we worked so hard at our dreams. You know, we brought ourselves to Nairobi. Mm. I could never think I'd be sitting somewhere in Nairobi and speaking, having a podcast. It's true. But here I am. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for sharing, you oh, know, yes. yourself with Anytime. me, with us, your story. Yeah. Um, and we look forward to your album. We look forward to seeing you perform. Of course. Um, I think we, we saw you perform at one of the gigs I was curating for Gotti, yeah. and that was fun. I appreciate fun. that. I appreciate fun. that. Fun. I think what I learned from you is what you're talking about, like uh, that dance is part of your performance. Yeah. I think what I learned, for, I have learned from you, what I see uh, with you, and what I'd like every artist watching to or listening to take from you yeah. is. Work on your performance. You know, mm. performance is not one thing. Yeah. It's not just how you sing or yeah. how you dress or yeah. how you look, but it's an all-rounded affair. Yeah. It's the performance, the dancing. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. you, maybe you can, in fact, give those who are listening tips yeah. to yeah. becoming a good performer. The main thing about performing 
is being able to connect your audience because you're performing in front of an audience. That is the basic definition. So you don't really even have to dance, you know? Uh, and I can, I can cite so many great artists who are not, who either are not even dancers, right? Or don't dance, uh, like, like Trey Songz, you know? I mean, or, or Mviri. He doesn't dance a lot, mm. but when he stands on stage, you, you can feel, feel there's a person, even Ben yeah. Soul. I mean, there's a person there and I can, and can connect. And you see like every, every, every eyeball is, you know, like is just glued to that stage. So number one thing is just connecting to your audience, right? To vocals, when you, it's, it's not even about having the best vocal range like Mariah Carey, you know? It's, it's not even that. It's just like being able to, to touch the souls the way, the way you express whatever emotion you're expressing through your song. Mm. And, and that comes, and it's, it's, it's hard to put into words, but that comes from experience. Mm. You start with small gigs, you, 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 you read the energy, you say, okay, because of what I'm feeling right now, I think we'll switch to this song. And then we'll come back to this slower song. Or, I mean, the guys are here, I want to take them, you know, a bit low mm. with, with, a, with a more R&B acoustic song. And then, so the, the point is just playing with emotions, uh, not in a manipulative way, of course, but playing with emotions so that people appreciate your art. Mm. Uh, and I, I think when you're able to do that, even if you don't dance, I mean, dancing might be a plus or not, because you can dance and then people are like, okay, you didn't really feel connected to your dance. Too, yeah, you know? yeah. So that can work against you too. So just being able to connect to your audience, that's the key. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the superstar himself, Mbae, <laughs> is the final artist on the second season of my podcast, VIP Access. It's been such a whirlwind of a season. Appreciate, um, I appreciate all the artists who've come through, you know, from all over the continent, from Uganda, Kenya, of course. Um, we had artists from South Africa, Ghana, from America. It's been so amazing to have this platform, to have all the people, um, you know, listening to these amazing stories from different artists from across the continent. And I do hope that you'll stick with me because season three is even better and uh, Ila and Lita and worse. Thank you, guys. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.